Welcome to the snow. This is pretty interesting. I want to show you some stuff about houses that are built way up in the mountains in Colorado. So first, that is how much snow has piled up on this roof. That's like a, probably at least three, three and a half, maybe even four feet. And it's all over this roof. Next door neighbor has a lot less snow. And the neighbor past that, you can see this roof here, doesn't have any snow on it at all. And it's not because it's smooth where the metal you know, roofing guys will say, oh yeah, it'll just slide right off. Yeah, that might be true, but I've seen some metal roofs around here that actually have snow on them. I think that it's mostly what you would think if you watch this channel, which is that there's more insulation on this house, less on that, and hardly any on that house down there. So let's go inside because this is one of the interesting things. Of course, you're coming in through all that. Your shoes are wet. So you're gonna come into the house and we find ourselves in a little mudroom where you've got ski boots, you've got snowboards and skis, you've got your jackets. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. This is where you're gonna drop all your wet stuff and where the wet dogs are gonna hang out. What's up, dogs? Then we move into the house. And of course, no house in the mountains is uh, fully equipped without a fireplace. That one is a direct vent. And if you're gonna do a fireplace, do a direct vent where it takes all of its air from outside, gives all of it back to outside. What I think is interesting is back here. So this is the other entrance into the house, which is the back door. And you have another Mudroom. Now this is semi-conditioned. We would call this a buffer space. It does have this heater right here, but they don't actually turn it on. Here is another wet stuff room, right? So this is fully conditioned inside the house, but you just need, you get so many helmets and gloves. This house has uh, two adults and two teenagers. So we just got a lot of stuff. Now here's one other room that I think is really interesting in this house. It's called the drying room. It's gotta be at least 90 degrees in here. I think that's pretty fascinating. We have a boiler system that's got a whole bunch of hydronic in-floor heat all over the house. This is called an indirect fire door, a water storage tank. It's just a big insulated tank. Here's something interesting. This house does apparently have uh, ventilation built into it. That's a fan tech and it looks like it's on next to highest boost mode all the time. So this is where you dry your clothes. It's also the mechanical closet. Um, unfinished floor. And it looks like that might be a crawl space access down there. Interesting. Anyway, this is like a classic house in a cold climate. People who live here are great. They don't have any complaints about the house. I, of course, as you know, travel with my carbon dioxide sensor and it has never gone below 1,000 in this house, even when the house is unoccupied. So when we close ourselves in our room at night and our room actually peaked above 4,000 uh, the first night that we were here before I figured out, oh, we just sleep with the door open. Sleeping with the door open is by all means a beautiful thing to be able to do. If you need cheap makeup hair, which I'm gonna be talking more about in future videos, you can just open a window. Uh, under, you know, in your kitchen. By the way, this, uh, just, I just wanted to share, once again, having these things be quiet is super important because if it sounds like this, you're just probably not gonna wanna use it. Like it's not something that you're like, ooh, you know what I'd like to do today is use my kitchen exhaust. So it's gotta be quiet. Um, anyway, I just think that this kind of multi-purpose room with different rooms within the house being different temperatures is so interesting because it serves a specific purpose. We don't, in my normal practice, I'm trying to make sure that my clients can have every room be the exact same temperature and not have these little buffer spaces that are like, ooh, maybe inside, maybe outside. But here, it's like perfectly useful. If you're building in the mountains, just know like two or three mudrooms might be helpful for you. If you have other things to add or other kind of uh, examples of where you've got different rooms that are um, weird use cases, please do comment below and I'll make another video about that if we can go there. Tune in next time.